Welcome back to another CXC review session. I'm your host, Ms. Baye Kim. So today we'll be reviewing the May-June 2016 HSB pass paper. Let us begin. So question one. Item one refers to the following diagram, which represents an animal cell. So as usual, we move on to the question. The structure labeled X is involved in, so we have A, the storage of fats, B, the production of proteins, C, breaking down substances, D, packaging substances for transport out of the cell. So if we go back to the diagram, we can see that X is the ER, which is the endoplasmic reticulum. So the answer would be the production of protein because it looks like it's pointing on the rough ER. So the production of protein, that's the function. Question two. An example of diffusion is the movement of, so please remember diffusion is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So we have A, sodium across cell membranes, B, oxygen from the alveoli to the capillaries, C, glucose from the digestive tract to the, al to the villi rather, and then D, sucrose from the phloem tubes to the companion cell. So the answer would be B, oxygen from the alveoli to the capillaries. Question three. Items three refers to the following freshwater food chain. As usual, we go to the actual question. The organism labeled I is, so we have A, a herbivore, B, an omnivore, C, a primary consumer, and D, a secondary consumer. So we'll go back to the diagram now. So in a food chain, it begins with a producer. So the plant here would be the producer. And then the shrimp or the crayfish fish that is here would be the primary consumer because guess what? It will be eating the plant. Then our fish that we have here now would be the secondary consumer. So the answer that we're looking for would definitely be D because D says our um, secondary consumer. So four, items four refers to the following diagram, which represents the cycling of nitrogen in nature. So the question, which of the following labels corresponds to the function of nitrifying bacteria? So we we'll go back to the diagram now. So we're trying to figure out where the nitrifying bacteria would be and it would definitely be two. So the nitrifying bacteria will be a two, all right? So let me circle two, all right. Question five, which of the following is not a function of calcium? So we have A, absorption, B, blood clotting, C, development of healthy teeth, D, development of healthy bones. So everybody know that calcium is gonna give you strong bones and teeth. So we already know that C and D is a part of it. So we're stuck between A and B, but we shouldn't be stuck because we should know that calcium is also important in blood clotting, all right? So the answer would be A, absorption. Question six, which of the following would most likely increase the risk of developing rickets? So we have I, living in a tropical climate, two, having a cereal-based diet with limited access to milk, three, inability of a large intestine to absorb phosphate. So you have to remember that rickets is having brittle bones or soft bones, all right, soft weak bones. So let's just go again. So I live in a tropical climate that won't cause you to have soft wheat bones because most of us would have had soft wheat bones when we live in the Caribbean, all right? Two, having a cereal-based diet with limited access to milk. So everybody know that to have strong bones and teeth, you know you have to consume a lot of milk, which has calcium, so a lot of calcium, all right? So two would be a part of it because they use the term limited. So limited mean, you know, a small amount, restricted amount. And then three, inability of the large intestine to absorb phosphate. What you may not know is that phosphate or phosphorus is 
also important for you to have strong bones and teeth, all right? So the answer would definitely be C. So question seven. A volume of two centimeter cube of Benedict solution is added to two centimeter cube of a coconut water in a test tube. The mixture is boiled for five minutes. The observation would most likely be D, as you can already see, a briquette precipitate because we're talking about Benedict solution. And if you know or may not know, coconut water has in sugar. So you know the Benedict solution will react with it positively, reducing sugar. All right. So question eight, items eight and nine refers to the following food groups in a person's diet. Go to the question, what percentage of this diet consists of staples? So looking at staples, we can see that it's half. So we have a one fifth, one, a half. So it would be 50 because they're talking about percentage. So it has to be 50%, all right? So nine, oats would be found in the food group labeled. So we have A, fruits, B, staples, C, legumes, D, vegetable. So we're talking about oats. Oats would definitely be a staple. It's not a, fruit is not a legume, it's not a vegetable. So it has to be a staple. So question. 10. Item 10 refers to the following pie chart, which shows the proportions in a balanced meal. So we have 10. A person diagnosed with diabetes mellitus or mellitus should A, increase fat intake, B, decrease protein intake, C, decrease carbohydrate intake, and then D, increase fruit and vegetable intake. So if they have diabetes, all right, so increase fat intake, no. Decrease protein, no. Decrease carbohydrate intake, yes. So the answer would be C. Items 11. So items 11 refers to the following diagram, which shows the internal structure of the tooth. The layer of the tooth, which is harder than the bone, is the enamel. And if we look at the diagram, that is I. All right. So enamel, dental, and pulp cavity. All right. So question. 11, we did that to question 12. Which of the following represents the correct sequence of events in the formation of dental decay, which is the same thing as saying tooth decay, all right? So we have I, abscess, two, dental de dentine decay, three, enamel decay, and four, plaque formation. So the first thing before your tooth or your teeth start to decay, we have to see some plaque formation, all right? That's a plaque formation. Then the next thing would be the enamel decays. So this is one, all right? Enamel is, can I make a two? It's two, all right? And then dentine decay is three, and then the abscess would be four, all right? So we have to get some form of plaque formation. Then the inner mill will start to decay straight into the dentine. Because remember, plaque would have been on the surface of your teeth. Then the inner mill would be the outermost, the toughest outermost layer of would start to decay. And from the inner mill starting to decay or wear and tear, then your dentine is going to be affected next. And after the dentine, we have abscess. So the answer goes back away. So it'd be IV, 3I, well, 2I. So it's D. All right. Question 13. Which of the following is true about pepsin? A, it converts protein to polypeptides. B, it converts protein to amino acid. C, functions best in alkaline condition. 
D is secreted in the pancreatic juices. So everybody should know that C and D are out of it because pepsin is secreted in the stomach. The stomach produces HCl, which is acidic, hydrochloric acid, all right? So the answer would be between A and B. So is it gonna convert them to polypeptides or is it gonna convert them to amino acids? So the answer is definitely A, pepsin converts protein to peptides. So question 14. Items 14 refers to the following diagram of a part of the human digestive system. Move on to the question. Which sequence correctly matches the number of structures to their function? So go to the table. So it says secrete gastric juice produces bile absorb soluble end products. So we're going back to the diagram now to see which one of them secretes gastric juice, which produced bile and which is, which has soluble end products. So I, or one rather, is the liver. So the liver is going to produce the bile. So one, the liver is one. Two is the stomach. The stomach is going to produce gastric juice. And then Three would be absorbing the soluble end products. So that is two, one, three, that's C. So the answer is C. The equation for aerobic respiration is C6H12, 6O2 plus 6CO2 plus 6H2 plus energy. So that is A, all right? Item 16 refers to the following equation. Go to the question. Which of the following occurs when energy is required by the body? So we have A, ATP attaches to a phosphate group. B, ADP releases a phosphate group. C, ATP is broken down to ADP and a phosphate group. D, ADP is broken down to ATP and a phosphate group. So when the body needs energy, ATP is broken down. So the answer is C. So 17. Which of the following is the correct sequence of events in mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? So we have I, pinch the nostrils. Two, place your mouth over the other person's and blow gently. Three, remove your mouth. IV, tilt. Well, four, tilt the head backwards. So the answer would definitely be tilt the head backwards, pinch the nostrils, and then place your mouth over the other person and blow. So that, let me see. So it would be, this would be the first one. So we are starting with IV. So tilt the head backwards, pinch. Mm -hmm. So IV, then pinch your nostril, then place your mouth over, and then three. So it's looking like C. So the answer is C. So number 18. Which of the following substances found in cigarette smoke is addictive? And that is B, nicotine. So nicotine is a very addictive substance. So number 19. The double pumping of the heart allows blood rich in oxygen to be taken to the body during the second pump. B, oxygen to be taken to the lungs during the first pump. C, carbon dioxide to be taken to the body during the first pump. D, carbon dioxide to be taken to the lungs during the second pump. All right. So the answer is A, oxygen to be taken to the body during the second pump. So question 20, the substance X produced by ruptured platelets is, so if the platelets are damaged, so we have A, fibrin, B, calcium, 
C, fibrinogen, and then D, thromboplastin. So the answer is D, thromboplastin. This is found when the platelets have ruptured. One. So 20. Items 21 are first. So the following diagram of the heart, 21. Which of the following is a correct comparison of structured labeled X and Y? So if we look, X is the ventricle, the right ventricle, Y is the left ventricle. So we're looking for comparisons between the left and the right ventricle. So A, thicker walls, Y, thinner walls, then B, thinner walls, and then why it has thicker walls, then C, sends blood to the body, then sends blood to the lungs, and then D, blood leaves at higher pressure and blood leaves at a lower pressure. So the only one there that is correct is that X, which is the right ventricle, has a thinner wall than Y, which is the left ventricle that has a thicker wall. So 22. Items 22 refers to the following graph, which shows the relationship between cigarette smoking and deaths from coronary heart disease, which is CDH. So we look at the graph with the number of deaths from heart disease um, each year per 100,000 men. And on the x-axis, we have number of cigarettes smoked each day. So question 22, how many more men who smoke 25 or more cigarettes per day died of CDH, which is coronary heart disease, than non-smokers? So they're asking how much died from cigarette smoking than the non-smokers. But they also gave us information. They said 25. So we have to look at 25. So in 25, we have 400. But please remember it's per 100,000 men. So it would be 400 times 100,000, which would be 400,000 men who are dying. Please note, let me get, I was trying to see if I could get a text box, but I don't see the option. Mm. Oh, annotate. I just remembered. So let me get a text box just to help us out. So we are saying that it would have been 100,000 times the 400 times the 400. And we would have been getting 400,000 deaths. All right. So now, you have 400,000 deaths. So we still have to compare it with the non-smokers. And non-smokers would be from zero, all right? So zero person smoking. And if we look at it, it's 100. So if we look there, we're going up by 100. So half of this would be 50. So in between 50, it would be 25. So it's 125. So same thing, 100. Thousand times one twenty five would have been one hundred and twenty five thousand. And that would be non smokers. So non right, smokers. So to get the remaining or to know how much men is dying, we have to minus. 125 from the 400. So our answer, so let me just do this just to help us out. 125. So our answer would be, You can use a calculator if you have one. This is our answer. And that is B. All right, guys? So the answer would be B. So B. Please ensure that you're reading your questions correctly. So 23. 
which of the following bones is not involved in the protection of the lungs? So I have A, clavicle, B, sternum, C, scapula, D, rib cage. So the answer is definitely the clavicle. So 24. 24 refers to the following diagram. The bone labeled X in the diagram above is D. So we have A, fibula, B, fumor, C, tibia, D, ulna. So looking at the diagram, we can see that it's the A fibula. So question 25. Item 25 refers to the following diagram showing the attachment of biceps and triceps. So which of the following correctly classifies the tendons X and Y? So tendons X and Y. So we have A, insertion and then origin, B, origin and origin, C, insertion and insertion, D, origin and insertion. So the answer is D, origin and insertion. So that is X is the origin and then Y is the insertion. Question 26. Locomotion is not important for humans to A, find food, B, locate a mate, C, avoid predators, and then D, breathe in oxygen. So the answer is definitely D, breathe in oxygen. Question 27. So Items 27 to 28 refers to the following simplified diagram of the kidney nephron. In answering items 27 to 28, each labeled part may be used once or more than once or not at all. Which labeled part collects filtrate from the glomerulus? All right, so which labeled part collects filtrate? So this is the glomerulus inside here. So it would be B, which would have been the Bowman's capsule. So this one is B. And then brings blood to the glomerulus. Go back to the diagram. Brings blood. It would be A. All right. All right, A. So 27 is going to be B. 28 is A. A. 29. A small volume of urine will most likely be produced after A, a high intake, well, a high water intake, B, eating a diet with low salt, C, excessive exercise, and then D, being in a cold room for a long time. So they're asking in which one of these scenarios will we get a small amount of urine? And the answer is C, excessive exercise. So 30. Items 30 refers to the following graph, which shows the effect that eating and fasting have on the blood glucose level. So 30. The hormone responsible for the increase in blood glucose concentration after 9 a.m. is, we have A, insulin, B, glucagon, C, glycogen, and then D, testosterone. So they ask us after 9 a.m. So the hormone responsible for it, the increase in blood glucose concentration after 9. So this is 9, blood glucose concentration. It was high around here, so. So it has to be glucagon because this would have been after the person's meal. If you realize that the graph was decreasing, it has to be glucagon keeping it. So the answer is B, all right? So if it was somewhere here, it would have been insulin. So we're at the end of another review session. Please stay tuned for the second half of the 2016 HSB Review Paper. I'm your host, Ms. Bayekem. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to all our videos, and I'll see you next time.